Abdur ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, who was one of the great companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Sometimes he would be, give, be given permission to go to the Prophet's house. And he narrates to us several hadiths from Lady Fatima alayhi salam. He had that honor. He was so trustworthy, so high ranking, so pure. The Prophet allowed him to hear those hadiths directly from Lady Fatima. So he narrates this version of Hadith al-Kisa from Lady Fatima alayhi salam. There are many beautiful treasures from this hadith, but I would like to share with you a few beautiful points that affect our family life. When you study the text of Hadith al Kisa, عن جابر ابن عبد الله الأنصاري عن فاطمة أنها قالت دخل علي أبي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله في بعض الأيام. She narrates when the Prophet once came, he was feeling fatigued, tired, so he went under the cloak. One beautiful point that we learn from this amazing hadith is that the members of one family must always be positive and loving towards one another, highlighting the attributes and virtues of each other. Look at the text of this hadith and how the Ahlul Bayt would speak. When Imams Hassan and Hussein walked in, how did Lady Fatima alayhi salam greet them? Ya waladi wa ya qurrata aini wa thamarata fuadi. My beloved son, the flower of my heart, the light of my eyes. When a mother addresses her children that way, can you imagine the positivity this brings to your house? Regardless of what has happened, you may be stressed out. You come to your mother, who's the bond and the backbone of the family. And she greets you that way. Automatically, it infuses you with positivity. You feel much better. You feel welcome. Lady Fatima alayhi salam is teaching us in this narration how to address our family members. And then look at young Hassan and Hussein. How much love they show to their mother Fatima, to their father Amir al muminin to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. A successful family is one that is based on the expression of your positive emotions. Some of us, we'd like to hold our emotions back. Especially when it comes to my parents, right? When it comes to my parents, I hesitate. Hadith al kisa te teaches you, no, show your emotions to your parents. Go to your father, to your mother. Assure them how much you love them. Kiss their hands, hug them, embrace them. That's how you build a solid, strong family. You know, subhanAllah, for us these days, especially the youngsters, the teenagers, this generation, we're very reluctant to show those emotions to our parents. But if the teenagers fall in love with someone, mashallah, they have an arsenal of emotions ready to share with one another. And sometimes you're wondering, Habibi, where did you save all those emotions? Where did they come from? How come I don't see them with your father, with your mother, with your siblings? Now some stranger shows up who has not really done you any favors in life, who doesn't really have any rights over you, and you are willing to show them extreme love and emotions? Is that fair? When I don't show 1% of that attention and love to my mother, to my father, to my siblings, my parents, who without my own knowledge cry for me. Many times, when children, when parents see the challenges their children go through, maybe it's a health crisis, maybe it's a family issue, maybe whatever difficulty they're going through. Parents actually cry for their children. Sometimes they'll hide those tears. They don't want you to see them. Parents who care about you, who spent sleepless nights for you, what, this stranger who you now love so much spent one sleepless night for you? What did this person do for you? The beautiful Hadith al-Kisa teaches us how to properly dispense our emotions. Keep a big chunk of your positive emotions at home. 
For those people who love you, care about you, sacrificed for you, worked so hard for you. But maybe that's not what society teaches us. Always remember Hadith al-Kisa and the tone in Hadith al-Kisa. Number two, see how in Hadith al-Kisa, each member of this family highlights the positive virtue in the other one, looks at the positive side. For instance, when Imam Hassan السلام, walked in, he was the first to walk in according to this virgin by Lady Fatima السلام, What did he say to his mother? Inni ashummu andaki ra'ihatan tayyib ka'annaha ra'ihatu jaddi rasulillah. My mother, I smell something very good next to you, with you. See, he came to the house, he noticed something positive, he commented. Hadith al-Kisa' teaches us, when you notice something good, comment. Some of us know we're the exact opposite. We save our comments only when we don't like something. The husband comes back home, he doesn't like something in the house or what his wife has cooked, immediately starts nagging and complaining. Start with the positive. You come back home, you see something nice, comment. Say it. Let your spouse hear it. Let your children hear it. Let your parents hear it. You notice that when they came to the house, they noticed something different, something positive. They quickly pointed it out. And that's a lesson for us, my dear brothers and sisters. Point it out when you see something positive at home. This strengthens the family bonds. Number three, the greeting. The type of greeting. Be creative with your greeting. When we come back home, many of us don't even greet one another. You're tired, you just want to go and do your thing. When you arrive, when you go to the house, you're back from work, from school, make it a point to choose a beautiful greeting that day. Greet your family members. You see how in Hadith al-Kisa, they were very creative with their greetings. And they would give each other beautiful titles. Ya Jaddah, Ya Rasulallah, Ya Man Allah. You see these beautiful titles that they share with one another? And they're greeting one another. Always greet one another. Even if it's with a smile. Even if it's with a smile. One psychologist wrote the story in one of his books. He says that there was a marital problem. The husband and wife were not getting along. Maybe they were considering divorce. So the wife, she goes and she sees a very good therapist. After that first counseling session, he realizes what's the problem. He realized that during that entire hour, this lady did not smile even once. <laughs> so he told her, okay, look, I have a strategy to address your problem. All I want you to do in the upcoming week or so Whenever you see your husband in the morning before he walks out, just greet him with a smile. You don't need to say anything. When he comes back from work, just greet him with a smile. That's all. She's like, that's all? Like, yeah, that's all. Try it. Come back and update me next week. So the next morning she wakes up. Before her husband <laughs> leaves the house, she meets him with this big smile. Now he's looking at that smile. He's not seen her smile in months or possibly years. <laughs> And you know how contagious smiles are, right? So he just inadvertently smiled. You know, what's going on? Why are you smiling? What's, what's happening? Then she greeted him that afternoon with another smile. She went back a week later. She saw the therapist. She told him, that's it. We don't want divorce. Everything's fixed right now. We learned how to fix things. Sometimes it's just a greeting that will change everything at home. And finally, my dear brothers and sisters, Amongst the many other lessons that we can draw from Hadith al-Kisa, one lesson is to always come together as one family, as one unit, spending time with one another. And include your children in your discussions. You see how the Prophet gathers his family? You have three generations here, a grandfather, his daughter, the generation of his children, and the generation of his grandchildren. Get together as one family. This strengthens your bonds, your ties. Even the small children, include them in your discussions. See, the Prophet ﷺ has gathered there for an important event. 
Imam Hassan and Hussein were young. Maybe Imam Hussein was a toddler. Maybe he was two, three years old when this happened. But the Prophet included him. He gave him significance and importance. When children see that their parents are giving them respect and significance and importance, that leaves a great impact on them. Today, these days, we're spending less and less time with one another. Believe me, even during this COVID-19 crisis, maybe initially we started to spend some time with the family. But then I kept hearing from a lot of people. We developed our own schedule and habits, and it's pretty much addiction to the screen. Social media websites, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, the new thing amongst the younger generation, right? Spending endless hours. We can barely get together as one family for 20 minutes these days. And I'm talking about quality time. Not everybody sitting on the couch doing their thing and we think we're in the living room together. No, that does not count as family time. Family time is quality time where everyone's focused on one another, showing care for one another, learning from one another. How much do we do that? The Prophet ﷺ teaches us to have family time. Gather, gather the family members and get close to each other. When they got under the cloak, they were very close to each other. Get close in one circle. Don't be spread out in, the, in your living room because proximity plays a role in how much you show affection and love and emotions to one another. It brings you closer, literally. So these are some beautiful lessons, my dear brothers and sisters, from Hadith Al-Kisa'.